When you begin yoga, I, I think it's really important to um, have some blocks. <laughs> So blocks in yoga are arm extenders primarily, but we use them in a number of ways to make the poses more accessible. So yoga blocks, they don't have to be fancy. I recommend the four inch yoga blocks, any thinner, and they're just too wobbly. Another thing that I would recommend that you get or have is some sort of a blanket that you can sit up on because most likely if you haven't done yoga before, you probably have fairly tight hamstrings and possibly you might have issues with forward bending for a number of reasons, which forward bending is just leaning forward. So sitting up on blankets, on blocks, um, is gonna make it easier for you in the seated positions, which might seem like maybe those are gonna be the easy positions, but they're actually quite hard. Another thing that I would suggest you have is something to use as a yoga strap. So a yoga strap is just um, a strap that has an end on it that is made of metal that you can um, you can make a loop so that you can use it for a number of reasons. Another, another arm extender, an example, or um, so that we can reach our feet and a number of other ways. You don't have to have a yoga mat, but having a nice uh, space that's always clean and it's an area that all you do on it is yoga is very, very nice as well. Now, now that I said all that, if you don't have any of those things, it's totally fine. <laughs> a lot of people don't have them and they still do yoga. Um, I'm going to show you how to use the yoga blocks and how to do things without yoga blocks as well. Um, and hopefully it just doesn't eat up a bunch of time here since we're only going to do 30 minute video. Um, but I, I'll keep making some yoga for beginners videos and if there's things that you'd like to see or need uh, help understanding, please just let me know. So to start out with, find a comfortable seated position. Now this uh, pose that I'm in right now, Sukhasana, is just shin in front of shin on the floor, uh, sitting up tall. You can feel your sitting bones underneath you. It's the two bones that you sit on, hence they're called sitting bones. The scientific term is ischial tuberosities. But you can feel those now and leaning uh, side to side. They're the bony part underneath your butt. Um, that we sit on. Okay, you lean forward and backward and feel them as well. I'm closing my eyes because it's easier to feel them when you close your eyes. Okay, so uh, from here I you just find that balancing point on your sitting bones where you can sit up tall. And like I said before, if it's already hard for you just to sit on the floor like this, please sit on something. Sit on blankets, sit on a pillow, find something to sit on. So elevate your hips and make it much more comfortable to sit. Have your hands resting on your thighs somewhere. Close your eyes if they're not already. Tuck your chin slightly to lengthen the back of your neck and begin to breathe. To feel and notice your breath. Now I say begin to breathe, but you are already breathing. If you weren't, you'd be dead. <laughs> so don't feel like you are gonna fuck up not being able to breathe in yoga. If you're breathing and you don't die during class, then you're doing it, but eventually you'll get better at manipulating your breath in ways. Right now, I just want you to start to deepen your inhale and exhale. And feel your lungs as they fill up and as they contract. Start to think of your breath this way and direct it in this direction. As you inhale, fill up first the bottom of your lungs, then the middle, then the top. And as you exhale, exhaling from the top of your lungs to the middle, to the bottom. Inhaling, filling up the bottom of your lungs so your belly expands, then the middle so your chest expands, then the top so you feel your shoulders rise slightly. As you exhale, exhale, feel your shoulders drop back down and your chest kind of comes back in and your belly, roll your navel in slightly, your belly button in 
toward your spine and up toward the underneath of your ribs. Not as much as you can, just a little bit. And then inhale, release that so you can fill back up. Filling the belly, your chest, and then your shoulders. Exhaling, feeling all everything kind of fall back into place. Your shoulders, your chest, and then we assist the end of the exhale. Just kind of squeeze the last bit of oxygen out of your lungs. Pull your navel in and up. And then start again. Inhale, expand. Exhale, contract. And breathe through your nose. On the inhale and the exhale. And if you're feeling like, oh, should I usually breathe backwards? I usually expand my belly on the exhale and pull my belly in on the inhale. That's a fairly normal uh, reaction to learning this breath. I don't want you to think about your normal breath right now. Where this, you shouldn't associate this with your normal breath. This is yoga breath. So once again, inhaling, filling the bottom of your lungs, and then the middle, and then the top. Exhaling from the top of your lungs to the middle, to the bottom. Do that a couple more times. Breathing through your nose on the inhale and the exhale. Sitting up tall, soften your face, relax your shoulders, don't clench your jaw. You're gonna keep breathing like this. And I'll keep reminding you of it. Om is maybe a term or sound that you've heard before. Om is associated with the sound the universe made when it was created. It's a, a sound that gets chanted that's kind of universally accepted as a, a spiritual sound. A, a unifying sound. Om uh, is said to be everything, everywhere, at all times. Om is you, Om is me. Om can mean yes. If you look up the word Om, you'll find tons of meanings for it. So we sing Om as a blessing for our practice. It's also a great way to help us extend our exhale. And in uh, the way that it unifies us in our practice, something that most people do before they start yoga. So you can leave your hands as they are, bring them together in front of your heart in prayer. Prayer hands, Anjali Mudra. Take a deep inhale. As you exhale, you're saying OM. pose that we're going to do is called child's pose. Balasana. Child's pose. So come to the end of your yoga mat or your yoga space. Bring your big toes together. Take your knees wider than your hips. Bring your hips back towards your heels. And then stretch your arms forward. If your butt is really high in the air because you can't bend your knees that deep or your hips, you could put something underneath your butt between your calves and your butt or on the floor to support your hips. Place your forehead on the ground and stretch your arms forward so your elbows are not on the ground. And let's warm up our wrists a little bit. Press into your fingertips, lift your palms away from the ground as much as you can. Your fingers are straight. 
Maybe your knuckles are just a tiny bit bent. And then as you exhale, press your palms down, lift your fingers up. So press the entire perimeter of your palms into the ground as you lift your fingers as far away from the floor and your thumbs as far away from the floor as you can. And then do that again. Press your finger pads down, lift your hands away from the, or palms away from the ground. And then press your palms down and lift your fingers away from the ground. And as you do this, continue to breathe deeply. Do that a couple more times. Now, nice and slow, walk your hands over to the right and just stretch. Take a deep breath. You bring your chest and your hands to the right. You don't have to go very far to get a stretch in the left side of your ribs. And now start to go to the left, same thing. Walk your upper body over there using your arms. Keep your elbows up, stretch your hands away, press your fingertips down and breathe. And then come back to center for child's pose. Take a breath. On your inhale, rise up to your hands and knees. And take your hands wider than shoulder distance apart with your fingers spreading wide. Press into your fingertips and your thumb tips. This is important. We do a lot of weight bearing poses on our hands in yoga. And you get a lot of complaints. I get a lot of complaints, wrist complaints. It hurts my wrists. Well, here's a way to help that. At first, it will hurt your wrists a little bit, and then your wrists will get stronger. Your forearms will get stronger. Squeeze your inner elbows, this part of your elbow, in. Press the floor away with your hands. Engage your belly, press your fingertips down. Okay, so that's the engagement that we're looking for in your hands. Tuck your toes underneath your feet and push the floor away from you with your hands. You're pressing down and forward, lift your knees. You're gonna keep your knees just a little bit bent as you walk in place. Feet and hip distance apart. And just walking, walking, walking. Keep pressing the floor down and forward with your hands. You're shoving it away. Press your fingertips down. Good. And then keep your knees bent. Stop walking. Push the floor away from you with your hands as you walk your hands back towards your feet. Keep your knees bent, head hanging. Take a deep inhale. Exhale through your nose. Keep breathing through your nose. Inhale, reach your arms out to the sides and up. Press off your heels to stand up. Reach all the way up and bring your hands together overhead. They can be kind of forward if you have hard, hard time bringing your hands directly overhead. And then exhale, bring your arms out to the side and down. Turn your hands out to the side. This will make it much easier. Palms out as you reach your arms up. It makes it much easier to bring your arms overhead. And then as you exhale, turn your hands out again, palms out as you bring your hands down. We'll do that a few times. Inhale, turn your palms out, reach up. Feel your shoulder blades move on your back, look up. Exhale, reach your palms out, stretch out to the side, stretch your fingers down toward the floor and look down. You might feel a stretch at the back of your neck. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, reach out and down. This is very important. We reach our arms over our head a lot in yoga, so it's good to know how to do it. Turn your palms out, reach up. Turn your palms out, reach down. Press into your heels. Keep your belly slightly engaged. Pull your belly button in towards your spine and up towards your lower ribs. You may even cinch in your lower ribs a little bit as you move. Keep breathing. Okay, getting ready. Inhale, reach up. Bend your knees slightly, exhale, forward bend. As you bend forward, lift your butt up behind you. Lift it up, keep your knees bent as your head comes down. So your sitting bones lift up high so that your pelvis can rotate your forward and your head can hang. 
Knees stay bent. Please don't force your legs straight now or ever. Start to walk your hands forward as you do make that contact with the floor. Really press into your hands even as you walk forward. You're pushing the floor away. Back to downward facing dog. Adho Mukha Svanasana in Sanskrit. Take another breath. Squeeze your inner elbows in. Now bend your knees and look forward. Start to walk forward as you do. Your shoulders need to shift forward over your wrists. You're going to get as close as you can. If it's difficult for you to walk forward now, take your feet out wider. And then once you get your hands as close, or feet as close to your hands as you can, bring your feet back underneath your hips. Keep your knees bent. Inhale, lift your chest, look forward. Ardha Uttanasana, half lift. Exhale, fold. Uttanasana, forward bend. Inhale, reach out and up. Remember, turn your hands out to reach up. Exhale, turn your hands out to reach your arms at your sides. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, forward bend. Bend your knees deeply. Fingertips to the floor. Or, if you have blocks, hands to blocks. Inhale, lift halfway up. You can even do the tallest setting, but keep your knees bent. Exhale, forward bend. So if you don't have blocks, your knees bending is going to be your way of getting your hands to the floor. From here, keep your uh, hands pressing down, fingertips pressing down. Step back to plank pose. Okay, so one leg at a time, stepping back. Hands uh, press down, press your fingertips down, the fingers are spread. Press into your feet, lift your belly. It's like somebody's sitting on your back. If this is too difficult for you, plank is hard, you're going to bring your knees to the ground. But this is not hands and knees position, this is kneeling plank. So your knees are behind the line of your hips. So either kneeling plank or plank pose, look forward with your eyes, keep your head in line with your shoulders. Don't drop your head here. One more breath. Good. And then bring your thighs to the ground as you do bend your elbows, but keep your elbows hugging into your sides. So you come all the way to the floor. Now flip your feet so your toenails are touching the ground. Keep your hands where they are and bring your forehead to the floor. Next pose is Cobra Pose. So we're kind of going over a modified sun salutation A, another very common thing we find in yoga classes. Hug your inner elbows in. Press your toenails down, press the top of your feet down, press your pubic bone down, your pelvis down, and then from here, pull your belly in, pull your ribs in, lift your chest, keep your elbows hugging in, and look forward. Lift your chin slightly, but keep the bottom tip of your shoulder blades squeezing in. This is Cobra Pose, Bajangasana. Okay, last breath. Now push into your hands and knees and come up to that kneeling plank position. Tuck your toes, pull your hips back, and come into downward facing dog. Now you're back in down dog, take a breath. Remember, push the floor away from you with your hands. Press all of your fingertips down and that uh, inside edge of your hands. Squeeze your inner elbows in, draw your low ribs in, lift your butt up high. Knees slightly bent or a lot bent if you need them to be. You would know if you need them to be because your hamstrings are dying. <laughs> the back of your leg muscles are screaming. Bend your knees. Walk your feet forward. Once again, if you need to, you can walk your feet out wide. And then once you get as close as you can get, you're going to bring your feet uh, hip distance apart. Inhale, keep your knees bent, lift your belly, lift your chest, look forward. Exhale, fold over your legs. Inhale, reach out and up as you stand. Exhale, bring your arms down to your sides for Tadasana, mountain pose. This is a pose, this isn't how you're supposed to stand, just like the yoga breath isn't how you're supposed to breathe. Take another deep breath. Turn your palms out, inhale, reach up. Upward salute, Urdhva Namaskarasana. 
Exhale, bend your knees, lift your butt, drop your head and chest. Fingertips to the floor or blocks. Inhale, lift your chest and look forward. Exhale, step back to plank or kneeling plank. So your shoulders are directly over your wrists, press the floor away from you with your hands and feet. And then lower to the ground, if your knees are up, you're going to lower your knees first. Then your thighs, as you hug your elbows in and bend your elbows, come all the way to the floor. Flip your feet, press your pubic bone down, hug your elbows in, press your hands down, lift your chest for cobra pose. Exhale, push into your hands and knees, lift from your belly, tuck your toes. Push the floor away from you as you lift your butt toward the sky. Bring your head between your upper arms. Squeeze your upper arms in, inner elbows in. Press the floor away with your hands, down dog. You can have your knees bent here. Your heels don't ever have to touch the floor. One more breath. Look forward. This time, you're gonna bring your right thigh to your chest. Now this is one of the hardest things to teach, one of the hardest things to learn in yoga, which gets really taken for granted. So right thigh to belly. Now come forward so your shoulders are over your wrists, kind of like plank pose, because it is. Now push the floor away and round your upper back, and then step your right foot as far ahead as you can. Okay, so some of you probably went like this. What you need to do is really squeeze your thigh into your chest, shoulders over wrists. Look at your wrists, look at your shoulders, make it happen, round your upper back, lift your thigh as high as you can, and bring that foot forward before you step it down. Now spin your back heel to the floor so that your left toes are pointing out to the left to a diagonal to the back of your mat. Keep your front knee over your ankle, and then start to raise your arms up. Now, one day, your thigh will be parallel to the floor. Most likely, you have too short of a stance right now. So, you're going to want to bring your back leg further back. So that this front thigh can be almost parallel to the floor. And I know it's really hard. So, start to straighten your right leg. So that you can turn your right hip back and bring your left hip forward. This pose is Virabhadrasana 1, Warrior 1. So uh, right hip back, left hip forward, and then bend your knee again. Try to keep your hips like you just corrected them to be. And then reach your arms up. Hands can either be directly over shoulders or palms together. We can just do that since we've been practicing it. Turn the left side of your chest forward. So Warrior 1 pose. Take a deep breath. Back leg is straight. Press into the pinky side edge of your back foot. Good. And now bring your arms down. As you do, you're going to turn your left foot out to the left. So now your left foot is to a diagonal to the back of your mat. Not to a diagonal. Parallel. <laughs> Front knee stays over your ankle. And the biggest thing that happens here for most people, especially when they're starting, is your knee is going to be dropped in. So you've got to really press your knee out to the side so it's in line with your hip. Step into the pinky side edge of your foot. And you just use your leg muscles to do that, your glutes. All right? And then from here, your chest turning to the left. Reach your arms out to the side and look over your front fingertips. Warrior one, or sorry, excuse me, warrior two. Warrior two, another very common pose. So you keep trying to press your knee out to the side, step into the pinky side edge of your back foot. Again, probably going to need to lengthen your stance. Back leg is straight. And now start to straighten your right leg again. This is a place I'd really like to have blocks for people. And if you do happen to have blocks, you can do a couple different variations here. So either stacking both of your blocks and making a nice tall stack for yourself, or here, here or here. Most beginners need actually this. But if you only have one block, the tallest setting will work fine. If you don't have a block, you're going to put your hand on your shin below your knee or up above your thigh, or on your thigh rather. Okay, so triangle pose coming from warrior two. 
Your hips slide back so that you can reach forward and eventually bring your hand down to the block on the outside of your right foot, right, right uh, shin. Stretch your left arm straight up. So this can be very difficult for some people. You might have to have your front knee a little bit bent. If you know that you're double jointed in your knees, definitely have a little bend in your front knee. But a lot of times people will try to touch the floor when they're not ready, uh, which makes it look like this for most people. They'll, they'll sacrifice their chest to do more of a forward bend. I want you to keep your shoulders stacked, one on top of each other. Pull this top shoulder blade in toward your spine and pull that shoulder back. And then look up at your thumb if you can, or look down at the floor. Blocks are our friends. Blocks make your practice accessible and make it so that we can actually do it. If you're a person who is resistant to using blocks, um, I'm sorry for you. I used to be that person too, and it did not have a very good outcome. One more breath. Look down. Bend your front knee. Bring both hands down and foot on the inside of your front foot so that you can step back to plank pose. Now let's look at another common pose here. So a plank pose uh, can be kneeling plank pose, but from here or here, you're gonna bend your elbows as you do squeeze them in towards your sides for chaturanga. So kneeling chaturanga or regular chaturanga. And then from chaturanga, you flip your feet, pull your chest forward and up, roll your shoulders back, for upward facing dog. This is not cobra. Our elbows are straight and our thighs are lifted. And then curl your toes under again. Lift your butt, push the floor away with your hands for down dog. Okay. Bring your left thigh to your belly. Pull your left heel in. And then look forward. Bring your shoulders over your wrists. Push the floor away around your upper back so that you can step your left foot down. We'll do that again. Come back to down dog. Bring your left thigh into your belly. Pull your heel toward your butt as much as you can. Come forward, shoulders over wrists. Make sure it's actually happening for you. Look at your shoulder, look at your wrist. Round your upper back, and then bring your foot as far forward as you can before you step it down. Still might have to grab your ankle and bring your foot further forward. Spin your back heel to the ground. Right foot diagonal to the back of your mat and reach up, warrior one. Okay, start to straighten your front leg as you do pull your left hip back, right hip forward. So we do that because this pose has some asymmetry in our pelvis. It like pulls our pelvis in a certain direction and we want to try to resist that a little bit. So right hip goes forward, left hip back. And then start to Arms are up, reach or bend your right knee over your ankle. And again, these poses are supposed to strengthen our legs. So if you're doing this with a really short stance, it's not really strengthening your legs very much. If you're pregnant or you're fairly heavy, you might have to take a shorter stance just because you've got more weight to you. Otherwise, try to build strength here by taking as wide a stance as you can, even if you're pregnant or heavier. Err on the side of challenging yourself, not just doing what's easy and getting through it. Okay, reach your arms up, palms together. Front knee is over your ankle. This one, not, not so much of the knee dropping in. You have to step into the pinky side edge of your foot so you can push that knee out to the side. And then warrior two, you've got to turn your back foot out. So now your back foot is at a parallel to the back of your mat front knee over your ankle. This is the one that pulls your knee in a lot because your pelvis is turning away from your thigh. So you got to really push your knee out to the side using the strength of your butt. Keep your legs straight. The back leg is almost always straight in these poses. Arms reach out to your side for warrior two. Look over your front fingertips and breathe. So we do warrior one, warrior two, the next pose is triangle pose. Straighten your front leg. And if you're using blocks, 
you'd have your blocks set up at the top of your mat like this so that you can easily grab them. Block comes to the uh, outside edge of your left shin. If you don't have blocks, you're gonna reach your, out, your hips back so you can lean forward, hold on to your shin. Or if this is just way too big of a stretch, you're gonna bring your hand to your thigh instead and reach your right arm up. Hand to thigh, hand to shin, hand to block, or hand to the floor. Turn the underside of your chest forward more, pull your right shoulder blade toward your spine, tuck your chin slightly, and lengthen the underside of your waist, the left side of your waist. The whole idea with triangle pose is that your front knee is, or front leg is straight. You can have a micro bend in your knee. If you're touching the floor or touching a block and you still need to bend your knee, then your hand needs to be on your thigh, okay? Good, last deep breath here. Look at the floor. Bend your left knee deeply. And move your blocks out of your way. Bring your hands to the inside of your left foot. Makes it a lot easier to step your foot back. And then hands underneath your shoulders. Either you know you're doing kneeling plank, so you've already dropped down, or knees stay lifted. Let's practice our chaturanga. Hug your inner elbows in as you lower your whole body toward the floor, all at one pace, not belly down first. And then flip your feet, toenails on the floor. Pull your chest forward and up, bring your shoulders back. So look up. This is upward facing dog. Exhale, tuck your toes. Lift from your belly, push the floor away, lift your sit sitting bones in the air. Head between your upper arms, down dog. And take another deep breath there. And bend your knees, look forward. Start to walk forward toward the back of your hands. Okay, feet hip distance apart. Inhale, lift your chest, look forward, keep your knees bent, remember sitting bones lifting, exhale, fold. Good. Bring your feet together. Sit down like you're sitting into a chair for chair pose. Squeeze your legs in, squeeze your sitting bones towards each other, and lift your arms up. This is a fairly hard pose. Turn your pinkies in, very strengthening for our hips and our legs. If it's too much to have your arms lifted, you can either reach more forward or have your hands on your hips. Take another deep breath, another common pose you need to learn, your katasana chair pose. You should be able to see your own toes, look down, can you see them? Breathing, don't hold your breath. Now press off your heels to stand up. Bring your arms to your sides. So let's do one more pose before we are totally done and out of here. Um, another foundational pose in yoga when we're learning yoga is tree pose. Uh, bring your feet together, stand up tall. So the idea is you're in mountain pose right now when you stand up tall, feet together, press your heels down, uh, point your tailbone down, draw the low part of your ribs in the front here towards each other, tuck your chin slightly. So when we move into tree pose, one side of our body is still going to be doing uh, mountain pose. Bring your hands to your hips. So you're gonna turn your right foot out to the side, but don't turn your hips to the side. So just your right foot turns out to the side. Remember, mountain pose on the left. Now bring your foot to your ankle. So this is the starting point for tree pose for most of us. That's a great place to start. You're still getting the external rotation on the right leg, and getting to practice the pulling in of your left sitting bone toward your inner thigh, left uh, hip bone into the socket, okay? But if for some reason you're already pretty good at balancing here, you might bring your foot to your calf, and this would be the second stage. So again, left hip bone stays in, uh, right knee is rotating out to the side, and you're just finding your balance here, feeling your weight in your left foot. And then, once you start to get this balance, you're gonna reach down, bend your left knee slightly, grab your ankle, and place your right foot on the inside of your left foot. And here you might hold on to your ankle for a while, just learning to keep 
mountain pose on that left side, making your left hip strong. Push your foot and your thigh into each other as hard as you can. If you feel like they're gonna stick together, then you can bring your hands together in front of your heart for tree. If you get that balance, you can reach up. So um, tree pose, you could go to a wall and put your knee on the wall and balance like that, or you can put one of your hands on the wall out to the side, most likely your left hand if you're doing your right knee down. Right, palms together or hands apart, and then bring your hands together in front of your heart, unless they're still on your hips, and step your right foot down. Start with your hands on your hips. This just makes it so that you can watch yourself. Don't let your hips turn when you turn your foot out. Make your legs strong, lift your kneecaps, turn your left foot out to the left, and then bring your foot to your calf, and pause. Take it easy. You know, we don't climb a mountain by starting at the top. You've got to start at the bottom to gain the strength to get to the top. So. Toes on the floor, just getting your balance. And some days our balance is better than others. You know, totally normal. Once you feel like you're getting your balance, you might start to try to put your foot on your calf, not your knee, your inner calf muscle. Pull your right hip in and keep this external rotation turning out to the side of your left knee. If you get your balance there, you might grab through your ankle, pull your heel up toward your groin, and then super glue your foot and your thigh into each other. And it might take a while for you to be able to take your foot off your ankle. You can blame it on slippy yoga pants, slippy shorts, whatever you're wearing. Okay, if you feel like they're gonna stick, really push and bring your hands to your heart. And like I said before, some days it's easier to balance than others. You might get a case of the floppy fish foot. Your foot's just trying its hardest to find balance on the floor. That's okay. Good for your ankle. If you get this, then maybe you might raise your hands up. Draw your low ribs in though. Remember, Tadasana on the right side. Pull your right hip in. Stay straight and strong on the right side instead of jutting out your hip to balance. Don't do that. And bring your hands together in front of your heart and step down. Excellent. Find your way onto the floor. And lay out of your back. With your heels directly behind your hips, toes facing straight ahead, arms at your sides. We'll do bridge pose. I know I said that was gonna be the last pose, but <laughs> I keep thinking of these poses that it's really important for uh, me to teach you if you're learning yoga. Bridge pose. Um, an indispensable pose. So heels in line with your sitting bones or maybe slightly wider, so as wide as your hips or maybe just a little bit narrower than that. Toes face straight ahead. Your knees are gonna stay in line with your hips and they're not gonna come together, but they're not gonna come apart really far either. And you've gotta in engage your inner thighs a little bit. You can even take your hands to your inner thighs and push into your hands as you push with your hands. Feel your inner thighs engaged and then keep that. Step into the big toe side of your foot, arms at your sides on the floor, and then begin to point your tailbone toward the back of your knees and feel your butt engage and lift. From there, lift your pelvis up. Okay, and then either hold on to the edge of your mat and try to rip it apart, roll your upper arms underneath you, or try to interlace your hands underneath your back, roll your upper arms underneath you. If you can't get your hands together, hold on to the edges of your mat. Once again, point your tailbone toward the back of your knees, step into the big toe side of your foot, engage your inner thighs, lift your chin away from your chest, and we're just gonna hold and breathe here, breathing through your nose, remember your deep breath. Take another long, slow inhale and exhale. And then release your hands, release your back to the floor, bring your knees into your chest, and rock from side to side. Now we'll do <laughs> maybe the most important yoga pose that there is, Shavasana, corpse pose. Stretch your legs out onto the floor, take up the space of your mat at least, and then move your shoulder blades down your back, 
Tuck your chin slightly and lay the back of your hands on the floor. Push your heels away and then let your feet relax. Close your eyes. You can let go of your deep breathing now. This is a pose you have to practice as well because when you first start practicing or doing Shavasana, you might be like, why the hell are we doing this? Why am I laying on the floor? It's time to go sweep. It's time to go do this or that. But this pose is the, might be the only time where you lay on the floor and your only job is to do nothing, to breathe and to integrate all the different things that you did in your practice. We'll just be here for a minute or two, since this is this might be your first shavasana. Just see what comes up. to gather yourself back up, pulling out all those strings that are being unraveled now. And when you're ready, you can start to move a little bit any way that your body might be asking you to. Do any stretch that would feel good right now. Find your way over on one side so that you can prop yourself back up to seated. Once again, if you need to sit up on something to make it more comfortable for you to sit, please do that. You don't want to be thinking about how uncomfortable it is to be sitting the entire time that you're sitting. It kind of defeats the purpose. So sit up tall. Take a moment here, hands resting on your thighs or in any other place that you feel comfortable and just check back in with yourself. Feel what's going on with you right now. And then to seal our practice, we also finish with an O. So you can leave your hands where they are or bring them together in front of your heart. Take a deep inhale, getting ready to exhale home. Thank you so much for trying yoga. And I hope it serves you. Namaste. And there's a lot more to teach you as far as beginning yoga is concerned, but any of my yoga videos, the way that I teach, um, you should be able to at least stumble your way through most of those. Even if they're difficult, I do teach how to do the poses most of the time. Um, so you could also start doing those as well. If you like this video, like, subscribe, comment, do all the things, and uh, I'll be making another beginner yoga video at some point. Thanks.